Hey YouTube, welcome to a new series called Object Oriented Programming in TypeScript. Before starting this series, you will need a basic understanding of the essential concepts that are shared amongst all programming languages. So variables, control flow like, like if statements and loops, and functions as well. If you aren't the most comfortable with those concepts, then I have a resource for you. I have a series called TypeScript Fundamentals that I recommend for you to check out. So you can pause the video and check that out first. And if you know all that stuff or you're coming from another language besides TypeScript, then you're good to go. So imagine there's a software shop and there's two programmers and they were given the same spec and told to build it. So the spec is a Mario clone. There will be three characters on a graphical user interface, Mario, Luigi, and Toad. And when a character or when a person moves the arrow keys, the character will move accordingly and also play the mp3 sound file specific to that character's voice. So I imagine players will be moving these characters and once they move it, the voice, rec voice recording of the characters will play. So we have two programmers, Alice and Bob. Alice implemented the spec with procedures. So these are just called procedures, also known as functions. And she has a move procedure and a play sound procedure. So both of these procedures take in character numbers to, to figure out what character they're dealing with. So we could use zero for Mario, one for Luigi, and two for Toad. So for the move procedure, the code is always the same because all characters move the same. So we just code, you know, make the character move. However, in the play sound procedure, we have to check which which character the the player is currently using. So we use the character number to look up which MP3 was recording to play, and we play. On the other hand, there's another programmer called Bob, and he implemented the spec with classes and row classes for each of the three characters. So we have a Mario class, a Luigi class, and a Toad class, and each three of them have the move function and each three of them have the play sound function. And there's no need for checking because we know in the play sound, we know that for the Mario class, play sound is always gonna play the Mario's MP3 voice recording and the same thing for Luigi and Toad. Of course, a change to the spec came in in software development. Change is constant, you're always going to get it. And the game now supports a new character called Peach. But for some weird reasons, the file of the voice recording must be in a WAV file instead of an MP3 file. So Alice had to change the code for the play sound procedure. So here is her old code, and this is the new code. So move didn't change, but play sound did. And Alice checks to see if the character is not Peach. If it's not Peach, then we have the existing logic. We use the character number to look up which MP3 sound voice recording to play and play it. Otherwise, if it is Peach, then we play the specific special WAV file. Here, I made a note that changing already tested code is not the best because you, you, you kind of want to leave it. Bob instead adds a class for Peach. So he has a whole new class. Move doesn't change because Peach was the same. And the play sound function is the code to play the WAV file with Peach's voice. So he didn't touch any of his existing code. He just added a new class. Unfortunately, both Alice and Bob did not implement the spec correctly for Peach. Peach doesn't move normally like other characters. She flies instead. So Alice changes her move procedure. This is the old one, and this is the new one. And she checks if the character is Peach by the character number, then we'll fly. Otherwise, we'll move normally. Bob instead just needs to change the move function in the peach class, and that's it. So you might point out that the class method or the object-oriented programming method has a lot of code duplication, which is bad for maintainability reasons. So Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach all implement their own individual move function and play sound function. But this is not the final design though. It's very important to remember. Bob looked at what the four classes had in common, and he pulled out 
the common features out into a new class called player. So he sees that Mario, Luigi, Toad, and Peach all have the move function, and they all have the play sound function. So we're gonna create, we're gonna convert this for now and create a new class called player. And this player has the move function and the play sound function. There should be parentheses right here. All right, so this is one of the most important slides of the video. So after we extract and pull out the common features, so the common functions shared in the classes, we link the other four player classes, character classes, with the new player class in a relationship called inheritance. So I wasn't consistent. I'm calling this class player, and in the other slides I call this character, but it's the same thing. Don't get confused with that. Player character, same thing. So in here, the player class is called the super class, and the four classes that inherit from the player are called subclasses. And there are no more methods in these classes, so we only have to maintain one class called player. So we have no co-duplication. But then you might say, wasn't the whole problem that we had to add new functionality for Peach? She's inheriting the move function and the play sound function from player. So how do we get that to, how do we, how do we change Peach's behavior? And the answer to that is overriding. So we can redeclare the move function and the play sound function on the Peach class and we can have peach specific code. And what that does is override the players, the player classes functions like move and play sound. So you have to override a subclass whenever you want to change or extend ex existing behavior from the super class. So going a bit into the terminology, this is an extended example of the Mario game example. Any class has data that it knows about. And we call these instance variables. So a player knows its health, it knows its velocity, and it knows its position. And a player also does specific actions, and we call these methods. So functions on classes are called methods. So the player can move, it can crouch, it can attack, and so on. So what's the difference between a class and an object? So far, we've just been talking about classes. A class is not an object, but it's used to construct, it's used to create an object. A class is a blueprint for an object, and it tells TypeScript and other programming languages that support classes how to make an object of each particular type. So each object from the class can have its own values for the instance variables of the class. For example, in a video game, you might use the player class to create many players, all with different healths, velocities, and positions. Let's hop into some code to create our first class and object. So I'm in my editor and we're going to create our first class and object. So when you create a class, you use the class keyword in TypeScript followed by the name of your class. And then you can start creating your instance variables and your methods. So back to the slide before, instance variables is what the player knows. So the player knows its health, it knows its speed, and we'll keep it like that for now. And let's create methods. So methods are what the player does. It's the actions that the player can perform. So let's say there's a greet method, and it logs hello world. So after creating the class, we can create instances of that class. We can create instances of the blueprint. So let's say we have, I'm going to create Mario, and we say it's a new player. And what the new keyword does is create an instance of the player blueprint. Player is instructions for how we construct the Mario object. And here you can think of instance and object as the same thing. An object is an instance of this blueprint. And then with regular objects in JavaScript and TypeScript, we can access its properties with the dot operator, right? So we have our health. You can set that to 10 and you can set our speed to 1. If you are already familiar a bit with object oriented programming, you can realize that we are breaking encapsulation, and I'll get into that in a later video. So when we set this, we can access its properties and we can also access its methods. So let's call it the treat method. So let's compile this and run it and we get hello world. 
So yeah, that wraps up the first video. We just talked about classes and objects and instances. We had a brief introduction, a brief dip into object-oriented programming. If a lot of things are still a bit hazy, that's fine. I'm sure a lot of things will be cleared up in the, in the following videos. And yeah, I'll see you there.